Hey Wargamers, today we got a preview of the 40k rules for all of the units that are going to be in the upcoming Blackstone Fortress game. So uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. If you like the video, go ahead and hit subscribe. That way you don't miss any of my upcoming 40k content. Uh, but Basically, yeah, everything that's in the Blackstone Fortress book is getting rules for 40k. Uh, that includes your explorers and also all of the uh, like Denzians and minions of the Blackstone Fortress, including spindle drones, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But what I'm most excited about and what this video is really focusing on is Daic Grek who is the crew tracker that is one of the explorers in Blackstone Fortress. So uh, if you haven't seen my previous video on this, this is uh, pretty exciting for people that have been playing Tau for a while since uh, this is the first crew model to be released since Anchor Proc from Games Day uh, all that many years ago. So uh, this is a really nice um, component to any hobbyist collection. Um, and so I'm going to be getting him simply for that. Um, I don't know if I'm actually going to buy Blackstone Fortress, but I'm definitely going to be getting one of the Daic Grek models some way, somehow. Um, and I will be using him in my games of 40k because of these rules. So uh, let's get into him. Basically, uh, Daic Grek is 20 points, which not too bad for a character. Uh, he has stats that are all basically seven or three, and for a moment I thought that they would spell out elite, um, but they don't, of course, because uh, you need a one to spell elite in elite speak. But his movement is seven. His ballistic skill and weapon skill are both three up. He has strength, toughness, and attacks three, um, and then he has leadership seven with a six up save. So uh, a pretty good crew, uh, just to begin with. Uh, but really what makes him special are his special rules. Go figure. Uh, he has the ability to deep strike, so at the end of the movement phase, you can deep strike him in further than nine inches away from an opponent. Definitely uh, a nice attribute. This allows him to grab objectives, or uh, you know, have some board control presence, or you know, if you're worried about uh, his positioning early on in the game, you can deploy him to counter uh, some other deep strikers, something like that. Um, so. Being able to deep strike always a good thing, uh, but really his his uh, you know his coup de gras of uh, <laughs> of special rules is the ability that he has to booby trap something, um, and what this means in gameplay is really he's be, he's able to dish out some mortal wounds once per game. So uh, what you do is you select a unit anywhere on the board. He doesn't have to be visible to uh, Dayak. He doesn't have to be within a certain range of Dayak. That unit wherever it is can be uh, booby trapped. And for that unit, you roll a die. Uh, if the unit has 10 or more models, you um, improve the roll by one. And if the, if the unit is a character, you worsen the roll by one. But if it's a four up, it does uh, D3 mortal wounds. And if it's a seven up, you get uh, D6 mortal wounds. So uh, that seven up roll is only possible on units of 10 or more, importantly. So you're not gonna ever be able to do D6 mortal wounds to a character because um, you know the best roll that you could get would be a five, not a seven. So uh, really that's, that's really there just to compensate for the larger number of models in those larger units. Uh, but nonetheless, even if it's a unit of just two dudes or maybe even just one dude, you could do um, three mortal wounds to that, that one dude or or two dudes, or you know, up to ten dudes uh, on average, which is pretty pretty nice. Um, Tau really lack the ability to deal consistent mortal wounds, uh, especially with the changes to seeker missiles that we had with the Codex. Uh, really, one of the more reliable ways that we have is a Sun Shark bomber. But Sun Shark bombers have two weaknesses. One is that uh, they're relatively um, flimsy, they're not very durable, they're easy to shoot down. And uh, two, the number of mortal wounds that they do is restricted based on the size of the unit. So in that case where we just have two dudes running around, Daic Grek could do three mortal wounds to the two-man unit, whereas Sun Shark Bomber could only ever do a maximum of two wounds and will most likely only do one. So um, there's there's definitely a niche here for Daic Grek. And finally, Daic Grek has the ability to be a sniper. So he can target characters even if they are not the closest unit to him. Uh, even though he just has a crew rifle, he uh, hits on threes, and because he's Tau Empire, he can benefit from marker light. So it's pretty easy to get him to land some reliable shots on a character. Is he going to take out, like, um, 
you know, a monster or, you know, some sort of like Thunderwolf cavalry captain or something like that? No, probably not. But is he going to, you know, maybe do some damage to some Eldar or other Xenos characters? Yeah, um, I think he definitely could. So uh, being able to have that component in your list for the cheap, cheap price of 20 points overall is pretty darn good. He has the character keyword, so you're not gonna be able to shoot him off the board. He's uh, going to be able to snipe for you. He has this mortal wound mechanic, uh, and he can deep strike. So these are all really nice abilities that you have in one model. Um, he also has the Crute Tracker keyword, which um, you know, every unit is going to have the their unit type as a keyword, but hopefully this suggests or previews or hints at there being more crew trackers in the future. Um, but whether or not it's just Daic, Grek, or more crew trackers in the future, like with a kill team expansion or something like that, I think Daic Grek himself can be an important and useful component of any Tau army. Uh, so really, you know, he's an elite slot, so... Um, you know, normally we are pretty tight on elite slots, but uh, with the way that 8th edition works and the way that you can get more um, elite slots pretty easily, uh, it's not an issue. So he could actually uh, fill out a detachment of, of elites fairly easily. And, um, you know, like let's say you take a, a Sakia uh, detachment, throw a throw a um, Daic Grek in there to round out your three elite choices. Not not a problem. Uh, works out pretty darn well. So I'm really excited about Daic Grek. I think he's going to be a great component to a lot of Tau armies. Uh, the, the issue is just going to be able to, you know, is going to be able, being able to get the model uh, outside of that box. So um, that's what I'll be looking to do. Um, all right, so I said at the beginning, I also want to talk about spindle drones. Spindle drones have a really cool mechanic where uh, they could also potentially be part of a Tau army. They don't have the Tau Empire keyword, but you could potentially take them as a um, auxiliary detachment or something like that. Uh, there's, they're a unit of four, each of them has two wounds. And the thing that makes them special is that as their unit takes on wounds, their weapons become more powerful. So uh, if you were down to your last spindle drone and he has just one wound left, uh, he'd be doing a 18-inch uh, shot that's strength 10 and uh, does like 8 damage or something like that. So uh, really a heavy hitter, not necessarily something that's going to synergize very well um, or at all with most armies, but something that could potentially be taken and is something kind of fun to, to think about. Uh, they are drones, I mean in name, not in keyword, so uh, you could kind of make an argument for them fitting in with Tau in some way, um, somehow. But yeah, overall, very excited for Daic Grec. Uh, it's going to be a great addition to a lot of Tau armies. I'll be getting mine soon, hopefully. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and happy wargaming. Hey everyone, this video was made possible by my supporters over on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, consider joining our community over there. Special thanks to Aaron Fox, Max Harrison, No Excuses Panda, Jared Egler, Nick Steele, Tao Oswald, Brian Mann, Jake Johnson, Scott J. Smith, Stephen Cohen, Eric Jackson, Andy M. Young, Benjamin, Giovanni DiMaggio, Julian Peck, Peter Benjamin Parker, RP, Timothy K. Piney, and Yuhai Penguin.